Introduction and Preface to Waiting on God This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Christopher Smith Waiting on God Daily Messages for a Month by Rev. Andrew Murray to Mr. and Mrs. Albert A. Head, whose love gave us such a bright home during our absence from our own, and to whose labours and prayers the days of quiet waiting on God in Whitechapel and the day of united prayer in Exeter Hall owed so much, this little volume is affectionately inscribed. Wait thou only upon God. My soul, Wait thou only upon God. Psalm 62, verse 5. A God which worketh for him that waiteth for him. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4, Revised Version. Wait only upon God, my soul. Be still, and let thy God unfold his perfect will. Thou fain wouldst follow him throughout this year. Thou fain with listening heart his voice wouldst hear. Thou fain wouldst be a passive instrument possessed by God, and ever spirit sent upon his service sweet, then be thou still, for only thus can he in thee fulfil his heart's desire. O hinder not his hand from fashioning the vessel he hath planned. Be silent unto God, and thou shalt know the quiet holy calm he doth bestow on those who wait on him, so shalt thou bear his presence and his life and light in where the night is darkest and thine earthly days shall show his love and sound his glorious praise and he will work with hand unfettered free his high and holy purposes through thee first on thee must that hand of power be turned till in his love's strong fire thy dross is burned and thou come forth a vessel for thy lord so frail and empty yet since he hath poured into thine emptiness his life his love henceforth through thee the power of god shall move and he will work for thee stand still and see the victories thy god will gain for thee so silent, yet so irresistible, thy God shall do the thing impossible. O oh, question not henceforth what thou canst do, thou canst do naught, but he will carry through the work where human energy had failed, where all thy best endeavours had availed thee nothing. Then, my soul, wait and be still, thy God shall work for thee his perfect will. If thou wilt take no less, his best shall be thy portion now and through eternity. Frieda Hanbury Extract from Address in Exeter Hall, May 31, 1895 I have been surprised at nothing more than at the letters that have come to me from missionaries and others from all parts of the world, devoted men and women, testifying to the need they feel in their work of being helped to a deeper and a clearer insight into all that Christ could be to them. Let us look to God to reveal himself among his people in a measure very few have realized. Let us expect great things of our God. At all our conventions and assemblies too little time is given to waiting on God. Is he not willing to put things right in his own divine way? Has the life of God's people reached the utmost limit of what God is willing to do for them? Surely not. We want to wait on him, to put away our experiences, however blessed they have been. Our conceptions of truth, however sound and scriptural we think they seem. Our plans, however needful and suitable they appear, and give God time and place to show us what he could do, what he will do. God has new developments and new resources. He can do new things, unheard of things, hidden things. Let us enlarge our hearts and not limit him. When thou camest down, thou didst terrible things we looked not for. The mountains flowed down at thy presence. Andrew Murray 
Preface Previous to my leaving home for England last year, I had been much impressed by the thought of how, in all our religion, personal and public, we need more of God. I had felt that we needed to train our people in their worship more to wait on God, and to make the cultivation of a deeper sense of His presence, of more direct contact with Him, of entire dependence on Him, a definite aim of our ministry. At a welcome breakfast in Exeter Hall, I gave very simple expression to this thought in connection with all our religious work. I have already said elsewhere that I was surprised at the response the sentiment met with. I saw that God's Spirit had been working the same desire in many hearts. The experiences of the past year, both personal and public, have greatly deepened the conviction. It is as if I myself am only beginning to see the deepest truth concerning God and our relation to Him, centre in this waiting on God, and how very little in our life and work we have been surrounded by its Spirit. The following pages are the outcome of my conviction and of the desire to direct the attention of all God's people to the one great remedy for all our needs. More than half the pieces were written on board ship. I fear they bear the marks of being somewhat crude and hasty. I have felt in looking them over as if I could wish to write them over again. But this I cannot now do. And so I send them out with the prayer that he who loves to use the feeble may give his blessing with them. I do not know if it will be possible for me to put into a few words what are the chief things we need to learn. In a note at the close of the book, On Law, I have mentioned some. But what I want to say here is this. The great lack of our religion is, we do not know God. The answer to every complaint of feebleness and failure, the message to every congregation or convention seeking instruction on holiness ought to be simply, what is the matter? Have you not God? If you really believe in God, he will put all right. God is willing and able by his Holy Spirit. Cease from expecting the least good from yourself, or the least help from anything there is in man, and just yield yourself unreservedly to God to work in you. He will do all for you. How simple this looks! And yet this is the gospel we so little know. I feel ashamed as I send forth these very defective meditations. I can only cast them on the love of my brethren and of our God. May he use them to draw us all to himself, to learn in practice and experience the blessed art of waiting only upon God. Would God that we might get some right conception of what the influence would be on a life spent not in thought or imagination or effort, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, wholly waiting upon God. With my greeting in Christ to all God's saints it has been my privilege to meet, and no less to those I have not met, I subscribe myself, your brother and servant, Andrew Murray. Wellington, 3rd March, 1896. End of Preface